Okay, on to the next Skip the Line reaction, and this one is for Vicky Smith, man. This is the Manchester Orchestra, Girl with the Broken Wings. Nobody sings anymore. I think we've reacted to Manchester Orchestra before. I think I've done one or two of their pieces, and I, if I remember correctly, they were actually pretty good. I also thought they were, I think they were live sessions, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, uh, Vicky Smith, thank you very much for the Skip the Line reaction. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for supporting the Sphere and supporting the channel. Um, um, I will always appreciate that. So let's get straight into that. Manchester Orchestra, Girl with the Broken Wings. Nobody sings anymore. This is the first time we are reacting to this one. Let's go. On the porch, she will sit, light another cigarette, and take a sip. Anything that makes it right She's outside Trying to hide From the fight Just inside Where her mom And her dad Destroy each other Okay, so uh, I kind of feel like we're already painting a picture of an abusive home and um, a girl who's outside already, already engaged in the vices, so in terms of like smoking, um, because sort of trying to get, get away from what's happening inside where the mother and father are going at each other. Each other. On the phone, she will call every boy, yeah, one and all. They will touch her in all the right places. And her room. Okay, so over here, so, so on the phone, she would call every boy who would then touch her who would all touch her in the right places essentially um you see that, that that that's that's what actually happens with these kind of situations is that you try to escape right uh you try to escape from these sorts of traumas these these broken homes and the problem with that the problem with an unstable um home is firstly you're unhappy firstly secondly there's a lot of trauma and secondly when you uh, thirdly when you look for a distraction they're not often good distractions right they're usually a distraction in either the vices or it's a distraction in the sexual acts essentially so you'll turn to that to sort of sort of get away from it all and go and and sort of like uh, um um seek um uh, sort of momentary pleasure so that it, it it numbs you a bit, or you you, you seek vices like drinking um, and smoking and drugs to numb it all, essentially. So already, what they what what they're saying over here is that is exactly what she did, which is sort of part and parcel um, most of the times. That's what comes with um, a broken home, is you know sort of a child who who will win they leave uh, um, that space they go and seek darker things because that's really all they know she will slide down the bed and try to fly and she will fall once again for the feeling See, this is why it is so damn important. She will fall once again for the feeling. And everybody who operates on feelings will consistently fall again and again and again and again. There is reality and there is truth. And that is the only thing that you should be uh, um, attaching yourself to. This world that we're living in of feelings, 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 right, is going to be the demise of the youth. Everyone has 
these feelings. Everyone goes through depression. Everyone goes through all these hardships. Everybody goes through that. But if you do not pick your burdens up off the floor, right, and you give yourself into feelings and feelings alone, you will always fall and you will always fail and you will never be able to lift yourself up. There is things that are greater than feelings. There are things that are greater than pleasures and decadences. There is a greater purpose to all of this. <laughs> there are even things that are greater than death itself. And if you're not able to attach yourself to something far more meaningful than the temptations of life, then you will always fall. And the temptations of life are driven by feelings. And purpose in life is driven by a moral structure. It is driven by responsibility. It is driven by guide rails. It is driven by... Um, um, restraint. If you give yourself into feelings, this is how we go. This is where we go down. Arms, her brown hair, she is faking. she have to give up for one night of feelings right for one night of not being able to control herself for one night of not being able to have self-discipline of one night of not being able um um to um uh, uh, understand that you have free will that you don't have to do this essentially but again on the flip side of that coin a lot of this a lot of this happens to kids that come from broken homes right uh, majority of of it so majority of it is actually from broken homes because um like i say firstly they're looking for distractions secondly all they see is just like agony and pain and those kind of things so they consistently try to run away from that right um and when they run away from that reality they want to run away from anything that um sort of brings them into a space that they have to be responsible for something and accountable for something, right? Because of that depression, because of that anxiety and things like that, you literally, you run away and not only do you run away from the situation, you actually land up running away from yourself. You detach yourself from reality, right? And anything that makes you uncomfortable, anything that doesn't in, in instantaneously intrigue you or make you feel good, you will sort of like step away from in pursuit of temptations with zero restrictions, without sort of restraint for these kind of things, just to realize that you land up putting yourself in a deeper hole because that is just not how life works, right? So uh, I like what he's highlighting over here. It's very, very important about what he is highlighting over here. And the worst part about this is that you eventually land up engaging with people. So these kind of people really need strong pillars to stand by them and to assist them because they're not going to get them from their parents. Their parents are too engaged in trying to beat each other up and trying to destroy the house, right? But then you go out into a community with a whole bunch of different people that have also their own interests at heart. Some of them would be evil interests. Some of them would be good interests, right? But they do have their own sort of larceny in their hearts as well which is very driven towards their own uh, um, agendas and then they try and sort of 
take you into a world that's just going to make life worse for you and then they play into the compassion of it no you 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 should do this you know you should let go you 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 shouldn't feel bad about doing this kind of thing you shouldn't like that kind of thing right and then also the kind of people which try and take you away from any level of faith or any level of um sort of standard and morality um and that's exactly what the devil wants i mean whether you believe in the devil or you don't believe in the devil i'm not religious myself but i I always love the phrase um of um that says that you know the greatest thing the devil ever did was to convince people that he wasn't real and that really really does speak to real human life and human tragedy because we get a lot of these people who are compassionate and a lot of these people who are now turning secular and they're trying to say that oh no religion and faith and all that kind of thing you must do away with it that's caveman stuff and blah 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 but regardless of the actual sort of like godly element of it or you know religious element of it the actual the actual moral standings of it the actual uh, um, virtues that you can take from that are actually very important um, as a young person right um, and they're trying to get rid of that and you'll have people in your circle who will try and take you from that and try and take you into a dark space not because it makes you feel better it's because it makes them feel better right People who are compassionate towards you and it's okay, it's okay to be okay. They themselves, they themselves have got issues and problems in their own life and they don't want to sit there alone. If they in the darkness, they need to drag other people in the darkness with them, right? So instead of them like sort of trying to lift your head up, they're going to say, no, it's okay to keep looking down. It's all right. You know, I also go through this and it's okay to look down and that kind of thing. A strong person is going to be like, hey, life's fucking tough. Pick your burdens off the fucking ground and let's go. Let's go. Lift your fucking head. Let's go. Find something. Discipline yourself. All right, work on your body. A strong, a strong body is a strong mind. Come, stop looking fucking down. Look up, right? Those are the people that love you. The people that tell you the things you don't want to hear are the people that love you. The people who are consistently sort of like acquiescing to you and trying to be compassionate with you and everything that you already have in your mind that you think is right, if they agree with all of it and be like, yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Get those people out your fucking life. Get them out of your life. Look at the people around you and see them for what they are and get them out of your fucking life. The people who are going to give you the hard hitting truth and say it as it is are the people you want to keep around, whether they hurt you or don't hurt you. Those are the people you want to keep around. suicide he speaks to the marks on her arms i'm not entirely sure if he's speaking to the suicide over there or if he's speaking to abuse by the boys so it's almost like you know you 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 went away from one form of abuse and then went into another form of abuse whether it be from you you know the new community that you found like all of these boys right or uh, abuse to yourself right and that actually happens psychologically that, that does happen because that's all you that's all you know that's all you've ever seen essentially and that's what actually happens with that you know those the same situation where a a a a wife is 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 stuck in like an abusive relationship and won't walk out of it um essentially it's because that often sort of um if you actually look far back enough she came from an abusive home so that's all she knows that's the only way she feels that 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 she can be loved it's like i'll take this because you know they're so depleted in their own self-esteem that they'll just take it because they're not going to find anything else because nobody finds me worthy, 
right? My parents didn't. He doesn't. So I need to sort of acquiesce to him. I need to um, take the beating because, um, you know, I'd be worse off if I didn't, right? So this is real, real, so that's real psychological trauma um, that comes from this. And you, you, you tend to land up in that perpetual state. Of, of abuse and if it's not abuse by somebody else down the line it's actually abuse by yourself to yourself right so you, you you land up abusing yourself because that's all that's the only way you know how to live and no one's sort of broken that cycle and that's your psychological state <laughs> say over here yes it's true that she's aware that she is breaking everyone's aware everyone's aware like you you you're a human being with a conscious you know that you're breaking you know when you're doing the wrong thing the only thing is that there's this element of denial in human beings where it's like you know it but you you're going to sort of discard it and justify it and that's what actually happens justification comes with comes with um um, uh, um, that awareness, right? Because you know, you feel guilty. You know what you're doing is wrong, right? But you really want to do it. And that's why restraint is so damn important. And that's why not following your feelings is so damn important. That's why creating a certain standard and structure that you stay disciplined within is so damn important because we're human beings. We have temptations and we're going to try and follow our temptations, right? As a heterosexual man, you know, I would sit there and look at a beautiful woman and be like, oh my God, you know, geez, uh, let's talk about um, Olivia Wilde or Olivia Munn or uh, Scarlett Johansson. If I had to see them in person, she's just like, yes, as a married man, it's like, whew, you know, if, I had to, if they had to make a pass on me, would I, whew, would I be able to, you know, would I be able to handle myself and not cheat on my wife? Right? As a heterosexual man, that is quite a difficult feat, right? And I, I can I can pass that off as being like, well, that's just, you know, that's just the way I am. You know, I can play into the denial, but I know it's wrong. I know that it is wrong, regardless of who that person is, regardless of how pretty she is. I know that it's wrong to do that, right? So that'll always play in the back of my mind. That 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 uh, um, sort of um, uh, um, self-consciousness is just going to stay in the back of my mind, right? And the thing that makes me virtuous is the restraint, what makes me virtuous is saying, yes, I know that I can cheat to my wife with this beautiful woman and have one amazing night, right? But what makes me virtuous is that I'm able to control that feeling. I'm able to control those emotions, but able to control those feelings. That's what makes you virtuous. You're not virtuous or brave by following all of the temptations and feelings that you feel, right? I just want to do this. So I'm going to do it. Do you know what I mean? That, that today is what's seen as brave. It's like, oh, whatever I want to do, I want to, I, I want to completely break free from society and chase my dreams and do whatever I want to do and things like that. And that's seen as brave. No, bravery, the, what comes from a, a particular virtue, right? A vir being virtuous is being able to restrain something, to, uh, um, to, to um, hold back and restrain yourself from doing something that you know is wrong. You know that it goes against the natural order. You know that it goes against d uh, decency. That is what makes you virtuous. And that's what actually happens. And particularly it comes, and I know this quite well because I've went through it in my own life um, with regards to when I was, you know, as a kid, myself came from an abusive home and things like that. I'm not going to get into it, right? And everything that I did that was wrong was always justified. I knew it was wrong. I always knew it was wrong, right? And I wanted to fly, but again, I had broken wings, just like this girl. I want to fly, 
but I had broken wings because every time I would take one or two steps forward, I would take two steps back because I was not able to control. I wasn't able to control my emotions and my temptations for things. So I just followed whatever interested me most and I just followed whatever made me temporarily happy even if I knew that this would that this would be detrimental to um to my life that this is just a waste of time or it would be a complete waste of money it would leave me completely broke right it would hurt other people it doesn't matter I would follow that knowing that it's wrong and then When I do the wrong deed, I would then justify it by, oh no, but my upbringing and that kind of thing. You you play into that justification and that's how you try to justify the wrong that you're doing. That's why it's so important to be aware of the fact that yes, you have a past, but that past needs to teach you something. And that past is super important so you 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 can take lessons from that and grow from that so that you can see yourself for what it is and then follow truth and reality and then set something up for yourself that is rooted in discipline and responsibility and that is your bedrock for happiness and not temporary happiness happiness just being happy comes from a controlled disciplined life not from an emotion swaying how i feel the kind of mood that i'm in i don't feel like it today blah 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 right if you've got things to do and you've got a responsibility and if you're a disciplined human being you will do what you need to do regardless of your emotion you will do what's right regardless of your emotion Anyway, this is going to be a super long reaction again. basically the end of the song um yeah so very sad song because this is the reality for a lot of people you'd actually be shocked um to find out how many people um you know my my wife when she uh, went and did the psychological assessment specifically with children it's like man she used to come home and she used to be broken man the stories that she used to hear man we live in a dark 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 fucking world a very very dark world and we need responsible people we need responsible people um that are able to take kids out of these out of these spaces and realize that you know their life is firstly worth something right and their role in society is their role in society right and that that's worth something that's part and parcel of your purpose is your role in society and you as a human being as a woman or as a man right and then as part of that is the validity of being that person right in society 
And secondly, it's the discipline. It's not, it's teaching children that we cannot have a society that is run by emotion. And we cannot have a society that runs from responsibility. And we can't, cannot have a society that runs to temptation all of the time and decadences and forgets about their their accountability and it forgets about their responsibility and their obligation to the world at large and to society at large and more importantly to themselves and the only way they are going to find that is through truth and reality reality and truth right and not these crazy concepts of i can be whatever i want to be and i can float into the abyss you know what i mean and um, no one can tell me nothing and I don't have to put guardrails on my life because I'm just this. If you don't have, if you don't operate by a set of standards, it's because you feel guilty when you break those set of standards. That's why you won't place a set of standards um, for yourself in your own life. And until you do that, you will always be miserable and you will fail to launch again and again and again. Like the girl with broken wings you need to take accountability for your own life regardless of what's happened in your in your past yes you can sit on that you can use that as a crutch all of the time oh because of my past because of my past because of my you know what nobody cares and that ain't gonna fix your fucking life use your past as a learning use your past as a guide post as opposed to a hitching post use it and then move forward in a disciplined fashion not in a feelings driven fashion and everything you do in your life you are accountable for it it is your fault if it fails or doesn't fail it is your fault your past is your past that can't dictate your future and if you allow it to do that you will never fly your wings will always be broken i love you all peace and safe peace and healthy i'll catch you on the next one peace